Well, yeah. we have to go to the Labadi Beach Hotel, fortunately. But uh, we, all, we all know that uh, in partnership with Stan Big Bank and Joy Business, um, we're presenting to you this morning the graphic business is Stan Big Business Breakfast Meeting. It's on the theme unlocking economic growth through manufacturing. Quality, cause, and competitiveness. And uh, Mama Yusuf uh, Bwadi is before the start of the whole event going to speak to some number of personalities. Good morning to you, Mama V. You're already there, ready to go live. We are live from the Labadi Beach Hotel. We did mention that we're going to be here, and yes, we are. We're having a conversation ahead of it, a bigger one here at the Omanyo Hall, the Labadi Beach Hotel. You're still watching the AM show. Happening now, where we are seated really is a, a registration ongoing before the breakfast meeting. Is a graphic business, Tambic business breakfast meeting. And we're going to be talking around the theme, which is unlocking economic growth through manufacturing, quality, costs, and competitiveness. Uh, let me introduce to you my guests who are seated. Uh, Mr. Nyama Ishen Famiye is General Manager, Group Operations at Kena Pharma Limited. Uh, he, you can divide him into two. And the other half, you'll find a Healthy Life. Uh, so you're also with Healthy Life Beverages Limited. Good to have you. Thank you for being here. Uh, and Professor Alex Dodu heads the Ghana Standards Authority. Good morning to you as well. Uh, I probably should begin with you. What does a gathering like this, this one that the graphic business and uh, Stambic business is putting together, what does this mean? Well, for me, I, when I got an invite, I like two words, the quality and the competitiveness. Um, it, it's good that we are giving prominence to the role that manufacturing must play in moving the economy forward. I mean, history shows us that there's no country which has moved forward by just buying and selling. You've got to compete, you've got to connect. And um, as you would imagine, coming from the Standards Authority and the Ministry of Trade, yeah. my whole focus is, why are we not getting it right? What is so complicated about this that we're not getting it right? And hopefully at the meeting, we'll come up with a few views. But there's one certainty. In terms of what it takes to succeed, Ghana has it. We have the men and women, we have the companies, we have the entrepreneurs, but somehow in that mix, there is, there is a missing piece. It's more like you have all the star players and your team never even qualifies for the World Cup. Well, I, I don't mean the black That's star. That's a familiar black story. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that um, this gathering will, as it may, let Ghanaians bind ourselves and say, if this is the course we want to pursue, because it does make sense to everybody. Then let's just do it and, as it were, put the talking aside. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chen Famiya, let's talk about Kena Pharma. Uh, how many people, for instance, does your company or has your company employed? Between Kena Pharma, Healthy Life, and the rest of us, there are 1,000 plus of us. Wow. Yeah. That's a huge figure. Yeah, in Ghana but, and in Nigeria. But you still could, could grow a lot bigger. Oh, oh yes. If, if the... In, if, the environment was right, and the right things were done to assist all of industry. Yes, all of us. Patra says, if the environment was right, what does that mean? It doesn't mean too many things. Um, I have said that if you specialize in trading, in finished goods that you don't make, you're only developing somebody else's country. Now, we have so many people who get out of school and can't find a job to do, also because of a similar problem. Because we have not gotten to the point where we make enough things by ourselves. So once we crossed that bridge, we came to the realization that for us to grow multiple foods, for us to get enough people out of school into jobs, we need many more jobs that are sustainable. We will have to help industry to grow. Um, helping industry to grow is what your point is, not so. And that would mean a number of things. One, the cost of borrowing is too high in this country. Everybody knows that. Two, utilities, especially for manufacturing, mm. are too high. Everybody knows that. Three, we have a lot of people with certificates, but it never seems to translate into the, the correct attitude at work. And I think those three things are key. My fourth issue would be to look closer when we look for markets. I think we seem to look too far away at invisible markets in places where they, we are not even respected. I've always said that a seven-hour drive from Accra 
takes you into Lagos, a city which has more human beings than the whole of Ghana. But we are always chasing some far-flung markets, and I never seem to get it. And so if we zeroed in on fixing these four issues, there is a lot we can achieve. Maybe I should throw in the fact that we need some protection for industries. If you can import anything, then the people who make things here at an extreme disadvantage. Mm. Yeah. Prof, you are the regulator. Hearing from the manufacturer, particularly with the things that he's outlined, how can you help? I'm a regulator of sorts, but I mean, for, for his industry, the Food and Drugs Authority. But what he said is a, is, a, is a point that we've made. I mean, there are two types of barriers we have in trade. There's the tariff ones, the non-tariff ones, which are the ones which have to deal with the specs, the standards, the quality we want. My view is that we must be deliberately Ghanaian looking, focus on ensuring that two things, goods do not come in here to compete unfairly with us. And already, already we have started and we are already beginning to see signs in areas like cables and other areas. The moment the Ghana Standards Authority started saying that if it doesn't meet Ghanaian specifications to be in the market, the local manufacturing manufacturers are seeing an upward trend. But it shouldn't stop there. I mean, any one of us on the market will tell you what is there. The fact that our markets, I mean, there has been serious dumping. So my view is this. We must wake up and say that, look, Ghanaian industry are Ghanaian industries. They need protection in two ways. At the least, goods coming in should have been subject to the same quality evaluation as goods import, I mean, locally made. Because our, our regulatory framework locally is stringent, and they all comply. So why should someone come in with a lower standard? That is number one. But in all other countries, you make sure that the specifications favor your own. And we are on that agenda indeed. Is that, is that lowering standards Not or actually. quality? Because if, if they should favor your own. We've heard, and you're here, so it's good, that our own is not of a certain quality. Nothing you know, could people be go on the market and looking for made in a specific place other than Ghana. Nothing could be further from the Nothing truth. Nothing could be further than the truth, and I will support you. Across, yeah. Across Africa, people swear by Ghanaian made products as long as they are properly registered products. The problem has been, so I would wonder what you would be comparing your average registered Ghanaian product with. The ones that come from the Far East? Is that what you'd be comparing to? I, I think that usually, and, and this, is, this is not a personal view. No, no, this no. This is I just reflecting what a, a lot of people say. So, for instance, you're looking for, depending on what you're buying, you're yes. looking for, for example, you. Megan in Germany, yeah. you're looking for UK, you know, I, I've seen uh, paracetamol, for instance, let's talk about pharmaceuticals. Great. You know, people say, oh, I'm looking for the foreign one, not the, local, the locally made one. And okay. I'm sure you've heard that before. Well, if I heard that, I would be surprised. And it would tell me the person needs some education. The Food and Drugs Authority in this country is one of the leading regulatory organizations in this world when it comes to food and drugs. Now, if you took paracetamol from a Ghanaian registered pharmaceutical company, and took another brand from anywhere else, inside it, it would be the same product. Mm. The additional expense you are parting with is basically just packaging and a brand name. So you are paying for what you do not need. If you told me about a substandard product that was probably unregistered, I would say okay. Mm. But if you took a registered Ghanaian product, compared it to the, uh, one of the same active ingredient from anywhere else in the world, if you paid more, you are only paying for packaging, a brand name, and for somebody else to make more money than your Ghanaian brother. That's mm. all. Prof, is it more of a psychological thing? Is it just our thinking? I would say that it's, it's a bit of both. Let me explain. Pharmaceuticals, foods, excellent. I mean, how many Ghanaians will go for, let's take beer. We'll go for a foreign beer over Ghanaian beer. It's no, no competition. No. Nope. Or bottled water. Yeah. I mean, some industries, we are so relaxed, we don't even fight competition anymore yeah. because... We've, we've established a brand, or in Katia Boga, for that matter. <laughs> so there, there, there are areas we've made a brand. Take electrical cables, it's the same. No one will go for foreign ones when the three Ghanaian brands are there. They will always buy the three Ghanaian brands, but the complaint was that they were too expensive. But they were expensive because they are good quality. So I would say that it depends on the sector. However, the narrative has been shifting for a while. Yeah. Ghanaians identify good 
quality made in Ghana goods and go for it. And in fact, that is why the Standards Authority with the Ministry of Trade, we started issuing this buy made in Ghana, the, the, the logo that you can put on your products. There are areas which have not been regulated and for which the standards, you know, but by and large, anything we have certified, I mean, take cement. How many people fight against, ah, maybe, I don't want to mention any brand. Well, yeah, but I get your point. But all the cement you buy. Yeah. So Ghanaians trust made in Ghana. They rely on our authorities. But two things have happened. One is that we have allowed dumping from other countries onto our market. And two, there have been areas that we have not regulated. And those areas have churned out products. And we can take furniture, for instance, the sizes will be different and we all laugh at it. But since we started, that now we are going to deal with furniture. We're going to deal with anything which falls within our remit. We are beginning to see an upturn. And indeed, we are hoping that really now it's going to be what we're exporting rather than we're importing. Mm. But my sister, to add to that, seriously, why should it be possible to buy imported paracetamol? What is paracetamol? And why should it be possible for you to buy imported paracetamol? Mm. If you drove seven hours from here or flew 30 minutes from Accra and went into Lagos, if you saw foreign paracetamol, it is made by a Nigerian company under license from a British company or a German company. So can I ask you the same question? Why do we have it here then? We would have to ask my brother who is a quasi regulator, not me. <laughs> no, no, I mean, Ghana is a stickler for holding on to the, to the books. We signed up to World Trade, uh, World Trade Organization rules. And if you want to stop imports, for instance, Nigeria has stopped a lot of imports. There are approaches. And really, it's, it's something that we have to decide as a country. Because you have to notify the World Trade Organization and give the reasons. Is it hard to do? It's not it's impossible not. to do. I mean, it's hard, not hard, hard is not do. a word I like to it use. Is, mm. For me, it is it commitment and the binding together. Yeah. I say binding together because, you know, we are all aware of one thing. Buying made in Ghana, using made in Ghana, indeed eating made in Ghana makes sense. Take the area of rice. Look, any imported rice you buy in Ghana would have, in Ghana would have been stored at least, at least two to ten years before being released for sale here. Because, you know, countries buy it, stock it, treat it before they bring it to you. Mm. So eating made in Ghana is more healthy. It's fresher, eating made, it's, fresher it's healthier, yeah. it's better. I believe it's about time that uh, buy made in Ghana, promote made in Ghana, eat made in Ghana, moves from slogan into actions. As a regulator, what I've told the industry from the standards authorities' point is that we would have Ghanaian companies meet the standard. You know, there were two words used here quality and competitiveness. Mm. In the global market, you compete based on one word, quality, which are assessed based on the specifications or the standards. So if you want a Ghanaian company to be competitive in the world, you've got to make sure that the features of Ghanaian products, when it's sent anywhere and assessed independently, will pass. Because trust me, you send your product to Germany or any other country, they don't really care where it comes from. They care what it contains because they are protecting their population mm. and their business. And, and, and I believe that with a little bit of push, and here I'm going to speak more in support of the industry as well. There are so many countries where industry is borrowing at near 0% to produce, to export in their national interest. China does it, others do it. So we need to get to a stage where we will say in Ghana that you know what, supporting industry to produce at dead cheap interest rates it's about creating jobs. It's mm. about raising money. It's about putting money in the pocket of Ghanaian business, businessmen and women so that they can, they can expand our economy. Musician Famia, let's talk about branding. Yeah. Uh, because we're also looking at competitiveness. Yes. Uh, and sometimes you look at... But competitiveness is a lot more than branding, is it? Yes, okay. absolutely. If, if, if you... But let's use, a, let's use the process a more example. Okay. If you look at the foreign packaged one, yes. you, you, you easily can tell. Mm you could in, in the past the... but that has moved on these days there are lots are we of absolutely moved oh on? yes oh yes oh yes those who have not moved on are in the minority these days if you took a foreign branded paracetamol took a local branded paracetamol of uh, a leading Ghanaian company the, the the packaging difference would be very little even if there was any Okay. Yeah. But th does it apply to all the other areas as well? Oh, I am sure. Because there if you talk are, furniture, yeah. you're talking about finishing. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know. Shall we say that in the pharmaceuticals and food, we, we, we've got it right. But in other areas, yeah. I mean, I, will, I, I could give you furniture. Uh, our traders, even fashion, the use of measurements in business is so weak that you buy four chairs 
and if you are not lucky, they will have four different heights and four different we know so those areas but, oh, but when you say that you are talking about the average artisan by the road when we talk about yeah. a proper company yeah. even yeah. there yeah. we are beginning to know seem to get what we are doing the problem has been the attitude of your average staff working in these companies we are, we are still too lazy fair yes we will make sure we get a degree but how, what does that translate into? Mm. Our attitude has a, had a lot more to do with our failings than anything else, not our education. So who do you look out to employing in your company, for instance? Of course, as, as specific job descriptions require certain um, qualifications, as if you need a pharmacist to do a certain job, you need a pharmacist to mm. do it. If you need a biochemist or a food scientist, is it the paper qualification? That no, that's a that is a that is a required. But beyond that, for for this country to prosper, for industries to do well, for manufacturing firms to move beyond where they are now, you need a new kind of young person, not just the certificate. We are quick to remind each other that it's five o'clock, it's not eight o'clock, it's break time. Even people who are not going to church want to remind you that it's a weekend. I don't know what a weekend does for a person who is not going to church, but that's our attitude, and that hasn't been fixed. Puff, well, what I mean, would it, what I, would, would it take? I would support you on that, <laughs> and what I would add, whether you're a regulator or you're a young person, is that it's about time we, we took Ghana seriously. It's about time we took Ghana seriously because the notion that, oh, this is made in Ghana, let's treat it anyhow, for me, doesn't sit well. We have Ghanaians, whether in Ghana or overseas, working for foreign companies where the attitude is completely different. They show up on time, they act on time. But you come to made in Ghana and people feel like, let's leave it there. What I've told my staff is that we can compete with the world. And in competing with the world, we just have to follow the same rules as the world. It's about zero tolerance for laissez faire. It's about not taking things and assuming that, oh, it doesn't matter. For me, I mean, it must align. The paper, I mean, the sizes must be correct. The weight must be correct. Everything must be there. And for the young people out there watching, really, we are going to build this Ghana. And to build this Ghana, this attitude of, oh, this, get away with it. And for me, it cuts across society from the way we handle traffic. And I'm sorry, I always bring it up. It's my pet, pet, pet it, that when motorbikes go against traffic and we accept it, who does that? Hmm. You know, and, 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 and that happens and you expect to go to hospital and be treated smoothly. You know, when you mess up any sector of the country, you mess up the entire Translate. country. So our take, definitely from the standards authority, is that it's about time we, being employed by the taxpayer, took Ghanaian seriously. And that is insisting that the right things are done. People will not be happy, but trust me, we are not here to make people happy. We are here to make you rich. We are here to give you a future. We are here to make sure that your education or your health are the quality you need. This doesn't come by just talking and wishing. It comes by working. Let's continue because, you know, I, I think I overheard you say that, you know, the talk shop, we like to talk too much and we don't... We, we, are, we, we don't. have mastered the talking industry. Yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> How do we change that? How do we change? Because the only... I mean, some people also think that the only way we can change is when we begin to talk about it. We have to know where yes, we are, we're what we're lacking. we're not supposed to end with the talking. We seem to end, begin and end with the talking. There are too many, I mean, I wonder how many people leave a workshop and go to implement or even open the manual they took from the workshop. So that, that seems to be a, there, there are too many of them. We've gone into a vicious cycle of just going from a workshop to a conference, to a meeting, to, to a round table, and never being able to find the time to actually do what we talked about. Mm. That seems to be a problem. Mm. Let's just veer off a bit. Let's talk about the potential for growth in this industry. One of the things that we're looking at is job creation. Uh, how many more can you employ, for instance? Depends. Environment. All the factors that you, you gave earlier. Environment, support. And of course, the market should not be Ghana. First of all, we need to start from home. We need to start by protecting local industry, by making some things impossible to bring into this country. I still go to restaurants and see imported water. And I say, why? I still see juice made in some outlandish place where I doubt they have a regulator. Can we, I say, why? Can we produce more 
uh, for all of us, because one of the things we hear in some of the areas is that uh, we can't meet the demand. It might be true in some areas. In the industry that I work in, it's, that cannot be true, and he knows so. He is not alien to my industry. In food and in drugs, I wonder how many things or how many products in essential medicines or in foods we have to import. Is it rice? Is it sugar? Is it juice? What, what do we have a shortage of? Except if you wanted some exotic black currant juice or something. But that's not, that's, not a, that's not a need. So why should we allow those to come in? Mm. That's number one. And then two, when we have made it possible for locally made companies to grow to fill the gap that imported products were filling, we should look closer. We should look to the Francophone company, uh, countries. We should look to Nigeria where there are over five cities with more than 20 million people each. Mm. They like what we like, they eat what we eat, they wear what we wear. What's our business going to a, 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 a business, uh, <laughs> what do we call them? Trade mission. Uh, trade mission in, I, I don't want to mention. What's the use? Mm. Prof, we have to wrap up in about five minutes so that we can join in uh, the, you know, the bigger conversation. But he talks about this not being the market we should look elsewhere yep you can tell us how we can get there you know if you look at the role of standards in world trade we always say you need to conform to the standards you need to compete with others you need to connect to the markets mm. i mean the main reason why we are here is that foreign trade we always say the language of trade is standards it's quality that's the only thing business understands do Ghanaian companies have it we do have it and our job now is to open doors. But then if they are producing at a cost which is so high, I mean, I had a chance to visit our only vehicle manufacturer. You can call it assembler or whatever. And I thought, you know, it's about time we, we walk the talk. Indeed, I, I did commit that we will put out a tender for the procurement of made in Ghana vehicles. And if that is but successful... But do they meet the quality? They do, meet, they do meet acceptable quality to the Ghana Standards Authority. Yeah. And we'll be not only buying it, but using it and branding it. Yeah. You know, because it's about time we move from... I don't want to be saying that, oh, Kantaka is good, we've endorsed it, and I'll be driving a different one. I want to be seen in it because, I mean, I'm, you have to walk the talk. We have to... I mean, I was very happy to see the Minister of Finance driving one as well. And, and I'm saying that it's about time we begin to support our own. Yeah. All countries that have made it, you started by saying that, how do we help you meet the standard? I always use the word meet the standard because the market is out there. And if I do you a favor here, your product will stop at the border because nobody's going to buy it at the other side. Yeah. But there are areas where we are, we are extremely competitive. Yeah. No fish gets to the European Union unless we have looked at it. So fish export is booming and we want to attract more people into that space. Now, even the U.S. is looking at the regulations we have for fish exports. Why? Because the requirements are stringent. We are audited by the European Union Agency for Quality at random and regularly. So they have the trust. And thankfully, our accreditation keeps being renewed without any problem so far. Mm. And we thank God for that. Can we do that in other industries? Absolutely, yes. What I think we need is that we have areas. I mean, let's take our cocoa industry from Golden Tree to Niche Cocoa. Look at the quality, look at the packaging. They can compete. How are we aligning with them to make sure they compete? And then also, how are we stopping the imports which are eating into our profits? I mean, we've seen what Blue Skies have done, exporting to the UK market and, and making a good business out of it. As you go around the country, for those of us who are lucky enough to go around, you do see, take SMEs. All it takes is to rebrand them and maybe you are right, in certain areas, especially the very, very small micro-enterprises, the packaging leaves a lot to be desired of. Mm. But the quality of the products is good. And this is where I have instructed my team that our job now is not to pass or fail them. It's to see how do we help them meet the requirements so that they can compete on the market. Because most of these need a young university graduate to, oh, I mean, to oversee them and to ensure that they tick the boxes and move forward. So I believe in Ghana. I believe we have what it takes. I believe we need to put the talking aside and say that, look, do we really want to do it? And if the answer is yes, let's just do Haven't it. we gone beyond do we even want to do it? We, we really want to do it. Somebody, Ghana is the only country where we start a meeting with prayers and proceed to lie. No, no, seriously, you know, the, the, the disconnect between talking 
and delivery is frustrating. Mm. I mean, I've been lucky enough to work in other countries where if we say this is what we are doing, tomorrow you don't need to call your worker and say that is what we said we are doing. In Ghana, it's more like what we said we'll do is introduction. Mm. You're, you have to call 10 times yeah. to do what we said we are doing. So at meetings, people are fighting to win an argument, not, not to get a job done. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've said it and I'll say it a thousand times. Sit a few of us, I call us the two known people, industry, academy, and say, this is the issue. We want rice to be sold. Let's take up the red tape. We'll fix it. We have the experts. But, and, and I've been praying to the good Lord, that Ghanaians who talk where they talk, there's a gap between the talk and the meaning. You should find another place for them. Because you know what? It is, it is, it is so unfair to the average Ghanaian, especially the uneducated, that we come and do yabi, 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 yabi. We have no meaning. And they go suffering. And we think it's right and it's fair. And we go to church and pray. Come on. Mm. Nobody does that. Now, let's look at the, the speakers we have this morning. We've got the senior minister. Um, and I want to link this to the talking, 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 talking. He's coming from... Uh, a place where action could be taken. What are we expecting from this? <laughs> Let me just add that we have Dr. Otin Jesse, because you mentioned cables, cables, cables. Yes. yes. So I'm these are our main speakers. What, 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 what should we expect? Um, <laughs> I would hope that both people you mentioned have over time stated their case over and over and over again. Dr. Otinjesi comes from my AGI, and, mm. and um, of course, I don't expect anything less than we've seen all along. We are hoping that we can finally bridge the gap between what we know, what we say, mm. and what we have always said we will do, and finally get around to doing. Okay. I mean, I expect, I mean, obviously, my boss is the senior minister. I do expect him to repeat a few of the things you've said. He's always having a story about how anytime he's traveled overseas, people want to buy made in Ghana medicines. His frustration, since I've heard from him a lot recently, is that we, the regulatory agencies, need to give an enabling environment. He's always complaining that we should not put barriers. Because, for instance, if he needs his product certified by us and it's going to take six months, he feels it's wrong. We have also committed that we will not be the barrier to industry. Indeed, we're asking companies that come to us, come get certification, and please talk to the boss in case there's a problem. Not because we need any favor, but we want to be sure that we are held accountable for the success of industry. Mm. Because it's also not acceptable to fight on high tariffs and other things. And then the least place you expect stress, regulators, and then they delay you or they frustrate you. That adds to cost because that creates uncertainty, that prevents you from predicting your markets, and I have been on the other side. I've seen that frustration. So upon assuming office, what I've said is that no, zero tolerance to that. Mm. Fortunately, with And the, so far? So far it's working because... What, what, have you, what have you heard industry saying that, that, that you're lacking in t that's, uh, as a regulator? Their biggest challenge has been time, the time it takes. It takes too long. And then secondly, there, has been, there were issues between what FDA does, what GSA does. Yeah. To the extent possible, I believe that both at the board level and at the CEO level, we have 99% aligned, and we are hoping that we have a date, middle of October, to announce to the country how these things will work. And that was being done with only one aim. How do we speed up the processes for industry? Mm. With, with us, if you can cut the time by at least 50%, it might sound well, small, but it's a huge... 50%. 50 percent. do. Cutting the time. 50 would mean you are coming from six months to three months, which is still too long. Well, so what, what's the appropriate time? I mean, if, if, if a person gets an order to supply a product and he needs a health certificate, for example, he doesn't need a month to get a health certificate for a product that's already registered, that's been in production for many years. Mm. That should change. I, I like the way you are throwing my words back to me. He's saying three months is not enough. And for me, this is the way I believe Ghana should be moving. Why won't we sit down with the industry consent and say that, look, what is acceptable? What does it take to do it? Mm. If it takes having a lot more young men and women working overnight, we'll do it. But is this workable? It is, is workable. Mm. I mean, the equipment are there. There are some tests which run overnight. But if the equipment are not going to be, to be working and it's got to be double track for regulation, why not? Look, I believe that if you're a taxi driver and you want to make a lot of money, you can do day and night. And I'll do it 
if it, it, it falls within for as long as you are not the same person driving in the morning yeah. and the evening yeah. for health reasons yeah. so all the countries that have grown and i can use the european union as an example industry started with regulators and industry said we need this time scale tell us why it takes you so long and they said money they said okay give us a bill we'll pay we want it and it was done so that sort of engagement yeah. is helpful because it may be that the extra hundred cities that we may charge mm. is paying us to you when you view it in terms of the time you gain. That's and that's why I said, let's let conversation now become practical. Yeah. Okay, so time is the biggest? What else? Time was the biggest cost, was okay. also a factor. Yeah, and that cost issue has always been an issue because we rely on IGF to survive as an institution. And you were not doing enough. And we're not doing enough. So you, not, had, to charge high, you had to charge high Because you're not bringing few. everybody on board. <laughs> I mean, industry has their own concern, but what we are saying is that we are here to serve industry. We are paid by the taxpayer. The more we hear from them, the more they bash us, the better we become for them. Mm. Because note, we, as a standards authority, FDA, we are here to service industry in the interest of trade and protection of the public. So the, you can't just protect the public and destroy trade. It, it doesn't make sense. In fact, the public will die. Because if there's no trade, there'll be no products. Mm. So what are you protecting against? So time costs, is there a third one? Time costs. I think the third one is going to be attitude. Attitude. Okay. Attitude of all public sector workers towards the private sector. Um, I am known to always be <laughs> fighting for consumers. What I say is that when anybody comes to the standards authority, I am their servant. It's excellent the president that has put me there to serve Ghanaians. If I'm in my house, I can do what I like. I'm sure. the boss. Okay. But for as long as you, 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 you sit on any chair, mm -hmm. the public has a right to demand things of you. Okay. There will be a lot more demands uh, later this morning, I can assure you. But it's good that you're listening. You know time, costs, and attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope that he's spoken for you as oh, well. Oh, he has spoken okay. for me. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, I want to give you a bit of time, maybe five minutes, to have real breakfast before the breakfast meeting. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much, much for your thank time you, this morning. It's a special AM show. Uh, this segment coming to you live from the Labadi Beach Hotel here at the Omanye Hall. We're getting ready uh, for the conversation proper to be moderated by my colleague Evan Spencer. Uh, Professor Alex Dodu, head of the Ghana Standards Authority, and Mr. Nyama Ishen Fami, a general manager, group operations at Kenafama Limited. They've been my guests. Let's go into the main hall now and join Evans.